Is this you when you're scuba diving in the water? Arms and legs flailing like crazy, head up, barely moving along, or would you rather be like this diver? Nice horizontal position, streamlined, effortlessly moving through the water. So today, we're gonna to talk about how you can perfect your trim while scuba diving. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Welcome to Everything Scuba. I'm Josh. This video will be the second in the series of five basic fundamentals of scuba diving. Today, we're gonna to talk about trim position in the water. In the previous video, Lyle walked us through the first fundamental of scuba diving and how to perfect your weighting. Today, we're gonna to discuss a little more about where we can place that weight. And we're gonna talk about some other things that affect your body position in the water. Let's dive in. So first, what do we mean by trim? Well, while we're diving, we wanna be in the most favorable hydrodynamic position. Generally, we want to keep our body and our torso in a horizontal position, as well as all of our gear streamlined. That will give us the most efficient method of moving through the water. Obviously, our arms and legs also contribute greatly to this. In general, we like to think about trim and like to break it down into three parts. The first part is the non-changeable items. Things like your environmental protection. Are you wearing a wetsuit? Are you wearing a dry suit? what style BCD you have, if you have a backplate and a bladder versus a jacket style, other gear that you're taking, potentially your fins, things like this that you need to make the decision before the dive, they're not gonna change. The second part are things that are changeable, such as the buoyancy characteristics of your tank. Also, the characteristics of your BCD or bladder and how that's going to be affected or affect the weighting and where you place it. Third is body position and that's gonna to relate to your torso, your arms, and your legs. The propulsion method that you use is going to affect what body position you use. Now back to our list. One, the non-changeable things. So let's look at a warm water diver. Consider they might be skin diving or in a three mil wetsuit. They are not going to need a heavy fin or a negatively buoyant fin because that may want to drop their legs, which in turn tries to rotate the diver. Whereas a dry suit diver may want purposely to have a heavier fin or a negatively buoyant fin, because that dry suit's gonna have some air that wants to make those legs buoyant, and they can actually get feet buoyant, and those heavier fins can counteract that and keep us in that nice horizontal position. So that's an example of why we need to take into consideration what we're wearing and the environmental conditions that we're diving in. I personally have several different fins. If I'm diving the dry suit, I have negatively buoyant fins. And if, I've, if I'm diving in a shorty wetsuit, I have some positively buoyant fins. Another non-changeable item would be your buoyancy compensator and the style that it is. Here we have what most people start out with in class, a jacket style. It has the rear air bladder, but it also wraps around and air gets there. Really ideal for keeping a diver upright at the surface. A little bit rolly underwater, a little bit harder to trim out. Now versus a back plate and a wing where all of the air is at the back and it really forces you into that horizontal position. Also with your gear selection, try to keep everything streamlined and keep all that gear nice and tidy. Streamline those hoses, keep everything nice. You don't wanna be that Christmas tree diver. Previously, Lyle taught us how to perfect your weighting and figure out exactly how much weight you need to carry on the dive. Dealing with trim, we're gonna decide how to distribute and position that total weight to put our body in a more favorable diving position. So maybe you're a diver who dives a jacket or another style BCD that has these removable weight pockets. They're great, we all love them, but we don't wanna put all of our weight in those pockets. That's gonna bring our butt down or make our hips lower. That's why so many of these BCDs have trim pockets. And if your BCD doesn't have trim pockets, you can add a trim pocket to a tank band or even weave on to your tank band, weave on a, a weight. This is a trial and error process. It took us a while, it's gonna take you some work too. This is a great time to work with your instructor. Ask them to help you figure out how to distribute that weight with the gear that you have. And remember, you're gonna to wanna to have some ditchable weight. The agencies all recommend at least 50% ditchable weight. So don't put all of your weight behind you that you can't dump. And for you wing and backplate divers, you know, I like to dive a stainless backplate. Even in salt water, I typically don't need any additional weight. But what I do need to do is adjust my tank vertically in the tank bands 
to adjust that position just right to get me in that nice horizontal trim. We're going to talk about that next. So in my teaching experience, what we often see new students and new divers doing is a butt down, feet down, head up, kind of seahorse in through the water. And assuming their weighting is correct and the distribution of weighting has been gone over, one of the first things that we can do to rectify this is adjust the tank position on their torso. So if you find that you're a foot down diver, the first thing we would suggest is just raise that tank up on your torso. Don't go so far that it's hitting you in the back of the head and holding your head down, but often that weight distribution will just change your center of gravity enough to put you in a nice horizontal position. So the opposite is true as well. If you find, even though we rarely see it in class, but if you find that you are a head down diver, the same is true. But move that tank down, help it to rotate that center of gravity so it gets you in a nice horizontal position. For our experienced divers who have worked hard to get that nice trim position, leave some tips and tricks in the comments below. So now let's take a look at what we consider some ideal body positions. So your body position is going to be affected by several things, but one of the most important is what style of propulsion or kick style you use. So let's talk about if you're a flutter kicker. We have a nice horizontal torso, a nice slight bend or arch in our lower back. Our head is up high so we can see forward ahead of us. Our legs are long and straight, toes pointed. So those fins are streamlined and will get good propulsion and we're not bent at the hip, slight flexing in the knee and very importantly, pointed toes. It's going to allow you to be a lot more efficient and get more efficiency out of those nice fins. The other end are arms. You know, often we'll see divers with their arms outstretched. One, it's really nice. If you have a wrist mounted computer, you can take a look at it. But more importantly, these nice long arms are going to counterbalance your nice long legs. If we had our arms up underneath us, they don't provide that counterbalance and we would become leg heavy. Also, as Lyle taught us in the first video of the fundamental series, we are diving, not swimming. We have big fins to propel us. We are not using our arms to pull us along. And if you do try to swim and use your arms, you're gonna throw off that center mass and destabilize yourself. So one thing that we see a lot with new divers especially, they're attempting to flutter kick and they're doing what we call a bicycle kick. It's a very inefficient means of propulsion, as you can see in the video. You know, they're bending their knee, they're leaving their ankles at a 90 degree, and all they're doing is pushing water back and forth. But this video is not about propulsion. That is one of the upcoming videos. Now onto the second body position. Very similar to the first, nice horizontal torso, nice slight bend in the lower back, the head is up, so they can see their hands are out to counterbalance, but you'll notice their legs are in a different position. Their knees, instead of being straight, are at a 90 degree angle, and their ankles, as opposed to being outstretched, are also at a 90 degree angle. Why is this position around? So imagine that my hands are my fins, my arms are my legs, and I'm in that nice position. Now typically, we'll see divers in this position, either frog kick from this position by leaving their knees bent, they pull out, twist, pull together, out, twist, pull together. Nice controlled little frog kicks. The other way in this position, you can still do a modified flutter kick. We're gonna learn more about this in the propulsion video coming up. So as you can see, there are a lot of contributing factors on getting you into that perfect trim position. One of the best recommendations we would have is while you're out diving with your buddies or in a continuing ed class, Underwater camera. Have somebody take some photos or video of you. Video doesn't lie. As a diver in the water, it's so hard to tell how that body position is relative to anything else. But when you see yourself on video, hey, now I'm a head down diver, I had no idea. Or I'm a foot down diver and I thought I was perfect. But it will show you and give you tips on what you need to change to get into that perfect position. One of the things that we didn't talk about in this video was your buoyancy. Your buoyancy is going to affect your body position in the water and affect your trim. The next video is all about buoyancy. Click this link. Thanks for watching. Dive safe, friends.